Hello and welcome by AA's art channel. My name is Ilkjan Wiersma and today I'd like to show how I painted this uh, wolf's painting and uh, well wolf's painting, how I painted this painting with the wolves <laughs> and um, I used my acrylic paints for the wolves and in the background I used my airbrush and I really like the combination of those two because I can uh, quite easily make a out of focus background and uh, with the airbrush and the more details I uh, can quite easily paint with uh, the acrylics and um, I like to use a lot of glazing techniques so that will, uh, you will see do me quite a lot and especially on fur yeah, I like to build up slowly and there were a lot of fur on those both animals and um, not to get lost in all the details I try to focus on the clumps of fur because those will uh, make it uh, much more realistic. You don't see all the hairs individually, but you see them in clumps of fur. So I will talk a, a, a lot about how I do that and how I don't get lost in all that fur, because there were a lot of different uh, shapes of fur and uh, different directions, and the directions are very important as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's get started. I like to start out with a mid-tone uh, color that I found with the color pick tool on the background and just fill in the complete canvas so I don't fight the white of the canvas and on the animals and uh, for this painting uh, were the wolves I like to start with a mid-tone uh, gray color and that's uh, I found it quite a nice color to work with when you will layer fur and make um, a fur uh, yeah, brush strokes to, to to create a fur, I like to start out with a mid-tone of grey. But first of all, I go back to the background, I, uh, you see me using here the airbrush, and I want to give the feeling of uh, that the wolves are being in the forest. And therefore I uh, end up with a quite dark background, so the wolves will pull, up, uh, pull out more, will uh, pop out more I should say. And, uh, but I want uh, to give the indication of the forest and you can have some, uh, some light falling through the leaves uh, onto the ground and you see me building up that now and some, um, yeah, some uh, trees in the background and some different colors, different shapes there and I use as usual quite some different colors there to so give it a nice rich background and like I said I uh, kept it uh, quite dark to uh, let the wolves pop up uh, a bit more and uh, because I want to focus on, on the wolves there and uh, I like to start, uh, like I said, with a mid-tone of grey on the wolves. I found it uh, very nice to work on when you uh, building up fur. And um, uh, as I, uh, you see me doing now, I will come back with the, with the shadow parts and uh, build up different uh, shapes of a brown in this case. And uh, I leave my brush strokes. I'm not very clean there. I want some texture there. So though if I made some texture... Um, uh, by accident I leave it there because I can use that I don't want a, a too smooth uh, to start because I want to build up fur and uh, for fur you have uh, to have uh, quite some textures so, oh, uh, so don't uh, make it too flat if you have some brush strokes those are, are okay because you can easily uh, layer over them and uh, like I do now I'm just starting out with the fur and therefore I like to use uh, the unbleached, unbleached titanium white and um, just build up from there and this is just the first layer I think I have at least five or six of these kinds of layers so I start with the fur first uh, yeah clumps of fur and indications of hairs a few hairs then I'm layering over color and I'm building up fur again and um, just until I like it and I need quite some layers there and especially on this wolf, uh, she had, uh, yeah, of he, she had uh, quite some uh, different colors there. So I will build up, and um, by layering, I avoid having harsh lines. And I don't like harsh lines in in uh, uh, paintings because it, uh, it, most of the times, it, it's not looking that realistic. So I'm just building up and layering colors over colors and uh, bringing in the fur texture again and layering again. And that's basically what I'm doing here and therefore i like to use uh quite some yeah i think about four different brushes i like to have the uh, rake brushes and you can buy them but i uh, also uh, I like to make them myself just with scissors and uh, uh, cut off some hairs of the 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 pencils i like to use 
and um, uh, the brushes I'm sorry the brushes I like to use of course <laughs> and uh, that will give me some texture and I use uh, quite cheap brushes therefore I don't use my expensive brushes because I don't need them I want rough texture because that will give me the indication of fur and I like I said uh, I started out with the unblood titanium white to make in the clumps of fur because I like that color to glaze on uh, uh, other colors it takes the colors quite well and especially on the lighter fur it uh, it's quite easy to give it uh, some color in there later on so therefore I like to use the unbleached titanium white and also it's, it's quite easy to darken it up so therefore uh, yeah the unbleached titanium white is the one uh, to go for me and because you you rarely see really white uh, white in portraits and also in, in uh, with animals the white fur isn't uh, most of the time not white only the the uh, few sections of highlights I leave white so therefore the unbleached titanium uh, white is uh, is quite suitable because uh, you can glaze over it it's not the the whitest and so you don't uh, end up to being too much off with your colors so the unbleached titanium white is uh, very helpful there and I'm just building up and building up and like I said in the intro there were uh, there were uh, quite a lot of fur and different direction different length of fur different colors and the only way to do this is my experience is just take your time don't rush take your time building up and I had a lot of um, times where it uh, didn't uh, look like the reference photos and that's uh, those are just the ugly faces and uh, of stages i should say and uh, you have to uh, go through them to to have a nice end result but yeah with experience you know and you can trust on those stages and you need to go through them but in the beginning when i started painting i found it very very hard i um I, I, yeah i don't wouldn't start uh, on a painting like this because i thought I couldn't finish it at all because there were so so many fur so many layers and uh, yeah now I have more experience in making fur I know I just have to build up and build up use quite some different colors don't stick with a few colors only brown tints for for example but I like to use some purples and some blues and some greens uh, greens are uh, who are also in the background to give the feeling of a uh, complete painting and not uh, some uh, yeah, some, some stickers on the background because otherwise the walls would to stand out too much. So therefore I like to use some colors in the background and glaze them over the walls as well to give the feeling that, the, that they all are one part of this painting. And yeah, like I said, I use cheap brushes and I'm, I'm quite rough in the fur because when I uh, would lay in the fur uh, too precisely of I try to, to make it too precisely it ends up too stiff so I uh, I'm just building up and making the texture rough on the rough side it's uh, easier to glaze over them and to make it a little bit smoother than the other way around so I just start to make uh, quite some rough shapes there and I can easily lay, lay over them and that will make um, give you the depth in the fur with of course enough layers and enough dark and lights because those are very very important I don't use always the exact colors as in my reference photo but I'm focused on the light and darks and building up and also the transitions between the different colors are very important for me at, at least and like I said early on I don't like rough lines where they uh, don't uh, uh, they shouldn't be so uh, Therefore, I like to layer and uh, avoid rough uh, straight lines. I have a lot of, there are a lot of different shapes in the fur, different directions, and I try to copy them uh, as, I, uh, as I can, as good as I can. And like I said earlier on, focus on the lights and the darks. That was so, so important. And building up and building up and as you see uh, me doing here in the beginning I'm layering over uh, much bigger pieces and now I'm layering over little sections because I'm uh, going to the uh, end to the uh, of this this wolf and therefore I don't want to uh, one 
color all over the wolf. I'm just glazing little sections who are, are needed to be a little bit uh, tinted with, uh, for example, a darker color of a little bit more color that I used on the rest of the body, for example, and just uh, not uh, laying over whole sections, but little pieces and slowly building to the end, to the finish of this wolf. And even though I'm not completely finished with the first wolf, I'm starting in now with the second wolf because I then I can better um, uh, I can better um, decide if I needed some some uh, changes on the other wolf. If it's uh, completely like I uh, I uh, would like it, or I need some uh, different colors, some bit more darks and lights. And therefore, I found it easier to paint in this wolf now and come back on the second wolf of the first wolf, I should say, later on to uh, make some adjustments in the, especially in the highlights. You will see me do uh, later on in this tutorial. But I can better um, judge that and judge my values when I'm painting in this wolf. So. Uh, I now needed this wolf to uh, to make it one piece to to judge what I needed in the uh, on the uh, first wolf and, um, and of course on this second wolf and this wolf uh, will uh, be a white wolf but I uh, what I like what I said earlier on uh, the fur isn't white it's only the highlights are really really truly white but the rest of the body is always tinted with colors who are around this wolf. White is uh, picking up the colors around um, yeah, the subject. So therefore I need those greens again, greens in the background, and I'm using some blues to give it a shiny uh, feel in the fur, and also a bit darker so I can build up uh, uh, a little bit more of the highlights later on, and a, a lot of browns, brown tints. Underneath the fur to give that uh, depth in the fur, the shadow parts, and to let uh, stand out the Clumps of fur much much more. If I would only stick with my mid-tone grey when I started off in the beginning, the fur wouldn't show up as nice as it will do now with the uh, dark on the layers. And sometimes I'm a little bit too light and no problem, I just uh, layering a dark color over and I'm uh, over that section and I will come back with another fur layer, I should could say. And once again, really watch my reference photo, which direction the fur is going. So I can uh, give the in indication of the cheek and uh, of the head uh, and the neck and also his uh, shoulder and his uh, foot. Because otherwise his, uh, his paw, I should say, sorry. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, because I'm watching the direction of the fur. So I can make it look that uh, there are uh, different shapes there, like the ears, they have to stand out a bit more. And here I'm coming back to the first wolf. I noticed a few uh, colors who were a bit off because now I have that white wolf in. And the white wolf is uh, appearing a bit strange at that moment, but that's because of the camera angle. Here is the um, end piece and you can see that his body is uh, more in shape than it uh, looked when I uh, was filming it. That's because I can get the camera closer to this canvas because this, this canvas was uh, quite large and I sometimes have a hard time to get it in a nice position because yeah when it's uh, close up I cannot paint so I have to uh, go in the middle. <laughs> and um, also the colors look a little uh, more dull when I'm uh, filming and I'm painting because of the studio lamps. But this is the closest uh, on how it looks in real life. This one is hanging in our living room and even in real life the colors are more vibrant and it looks uh, much, much nicer. But yeah, this photo I was uh, satisfied with because it uh, shows the closest to the, uh, the really end piece and how it looks in real life. So being this a uh, surprise painting for my husband and uh, also a little bit for myself, <laughs> um, I had uh, quite some hard time to paint this because uh, of course the fur were quite uh, a lot of work, but I could only work on this painting when uh, my husband was not at home. So you can imagine when I heard the car, car drive up um, uh, to the house that I had to make sure that the paint was not wet and I had to cover up everything. So. <laughs> I uh, really tried to watch when he uh, would come home and if I, uh, I stopped uh, about a half hour before he, uh, he will, 
will come home from work so I, the paint has a little bit time to dry and I can't I could hide it behind this curtain and yeah I finally um, I finally done with that because the, pin, the painting was finished and uh, yeah it's now hanging on the, on the wall not at this moment of course but he had it uh, as a gift and he was really happy about it so I'm happy about it and this is uh, just a special painting for uh, for our twos for our two because uh, we really like wolves and um, so therefore the painting is not for sale but I will have some prints of it and some postcards so if you like you can find it uh, on my website even though the painting itself will be on my website but it's not for sale it's just uh, a surprise gift for my uh, for my husband and um, also uh, if you like those frames I know they are normally quite expensive but I like to um, um, uh, buy them in secondhand stores or uh, when you have a, a garage sale or something like that, you may end up buying those frames for not that much, not that much uh, money. And um, I will store them here. I had this one all, uh, about uh, a year now, I think. But I know there will be a moment that I'm going to make a painting for in this frame. So therefore, I just uh, store it here in my studio, and uh, I will buy a canvas. And now I, I had this idea of these uh, two walls, and I just like this frame on this canvas so therefore um, I'm happy I just bought the, this uh, frame and I kept it stored in my studio. So if you like this tutorial, if you like my other tutorials please subscribe to my channel, I would really like that. If you have any questions of course uh, about this painting or some other questions please leave them in the comment section below and I will come to them as soon as I can. And if you like you can follow me on Facebook. Face, Facebook. Facebook, Instagram and my own website and those links will also be in the video description below and if I missed anything, no I don't I think, so therefore I like to uh, stop rambling now and I hope to see you at my one of my next videos. Bye bye!